Hello, it's Barna here and in this video I wanted to give you a full overview and how to get started kind of content about Sonoff's latest iHost, which is it's supposed to be a smart home hub, but uh, depending on when you're checking out this video, you might already know, it is a little bit more than what they are advertising on the box. And in this video, I will definitely try to show you all the little uh, features and tips and tricks that I can uh, provide for a much better experience. So let's get started with the details and see what we can use this device for. So first of all, thank you for Sonoff for sending me this uh, review unit. Uh, it was a big help to be able to see that this is not just a smart home hub, but it will be much, much more in the future. And hopefully you will see this by the end of this video. Um, basically, uh, my plan is to give you a quick overview of the actual device, what's in the box and what we need to know about. Then we will dive into the actual hardware that we need to uh, know what it is using and why this will be a long-term partner for your uh, smart home project. And then we can get started and install it, uh, do uh, play around with add-ons, maybe install a home assistant server. Ooh and some other useful information like where this project is actually heading and why this project might actually worth your money from the go and get started with it uh, as soon as it is released. So without further ado, uh, let's head over to my uh, first photo and take a look on the device and what's in the box. So basically other than the box, you're getting a thin client sized uh, smart home hub, the iHost smart home hub. Also, you're getting a uh, Ethernet cable and a USB type C cable to power it. There is no power adapter in the box, so you need to add that from somewhere else. It is recommended to have something up to two amps of uh, output. So basically, you need to power this device similar to a Raspberry Pi uh, 3 or 4 in terms of uh, power delivery, but this is good to have at least the cables available. Uh, other than that, uh, basically, before I go any further, what you can see is just on the front, this uh, slot is actually not a slot. This is a RGB LED row and is used to uh, give us an indication of the status of the device, depending on what you're actually doing, if it's booting up, if it's looking for network, uh, trying to add a Zigbee device or whatsoever. So this is basically everything that we need to know about what's in the box and what's on the front. Now on the back, it is much more interesting. Uh, we are getting a reset pin hole. There, oh, sorry. There is also a reset pin inside the box. So we have the reset hole to uh, press the button if, well, in case of need. Also, we have a micro SD card slot. This is where you put your micro SD card to, to be able to add add-ons as Docker images. Uh, after that, we have a USB 2.0 port. As far as I know, based on our conversations, um, this was originally intended for USB storage for AI detection for your uh, camera feeds. But right now, at this very moment, uh, this feature is turned off. Now, I guess this will be turned back on based on the roadmap, but uh, right now uh, that was the intention originally, but this feature is turned off. Uh, after that, we have the USB Type-C uh, port for power delivery, and we have a 10 uh, slash 100 megabits uh, Ethernet port. Based on the actual usage of this device, that is more than enough. By the way, just a, a small little hint, I have uh, successfully installed Plex Media Server and it was working fine. Just another little hint of uh, where this device can go in the future. So uh, let's move back to the actual device and box and, and we can get into the more interesting details in a bit. So other than that, basically, um, from the top, 
uh, we get uh, four different buttons. Basically, we have the uh, power button, the connection button, and security buttons. But I will just uh, head over to the user manual. So you can see that on the top, uh, we have the uh, most important buttons available, depending on where you're going to place this device. In my case, because this is only a review unit that I actually have, and this is the, the smaller in terms of uh, hardware. We're going to talk about this in a second. This is on my desk, but I will purchase a, a bigger version for my actual personal use. Uh, and, and yeah, we will get into the, uh, to the, the, the hardware. But basically, depending on where you have the device in your home, uh, these buttons can be quite uh, useful. Now, in terms of... of uh, hardware. Uh, what you need to know about this is that um, in this video's description there is the link for my written review with a lot of uh, images, just to make sure. So basically uh, in terms of hardware uh, it consists of two different boards. So there is a main um, connectivity board or uh, base board and on top of that we have uh, two micro uh, SATA, SATA port, sorry for my English, and that's where they have connected the ROG chip um, core board with the actual processing power. So, um, as far as I can see, this is actually quite um, quite good for in, in terms of future and, and interchangeability, because maybe in one or two years time we get a board upgrade that we can switch the boards and the software uh, can be upgraded who knows what but in terms of processing power it can be uh, changed to something else maybe in the future but all the connectivity parts are on the uh, main um, baseboard so the uh, chipset for the uh, Zigbee connectivity, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, um, uh, the Ethernet, everything related to connection is actually on the, the base board. And in terms of power, uh, as far as I understand, this is a rock chip uh, design. So we have two uh, variants, depending on which hardware uh, requirements you may have in the future. I personally will be choosing the bigger version. So we have the RV1126 and the RV1109. Now the 09 is the smaller version. It has a uh, dual core 1.5 gigahertz uh, processor and NPU with uh, 1.2 uh, tops, uh, 2 gigs of DDR4 memory, and f and 8 gigs of eMMC. Now the RV1126, this will be the more expensive uh, unit. It has a double amount of processing power, so it's a, it's a quad core. It has uh, uh, two tops and 4 gigs of DDR4 memory. So basically double amount of memory, double amount of processing power, which is quite useful, especially if you already think about the uh, mentions before with Home Assistant and, and uh, Plex Media Server and, you know, it is these little interesting ones. And for the eMMC uh, storage, it actually is the same 8 gigs of um, available space for uh, software. So this is in terms of hardware and what's in the box and uh, knowing that uh, I think you can already make a decision which one will be um, a more appealing for the price. Now after that uh, my plan is to let's get into the actual test of the device. So for that what I'm going to do is uh, show you uh, just <laughs> a few b-rolls of how to get started and uh, get you through the process of getting started, installing everything and uh, get back on, sorry, and get on with all the device uh, devices connected. To get started with the device, all we need to do is uh, plug in the USB Type-C cable that came with the device into the device and also you need to add your own uh, power adapter for it. After that, what will happen is that on the front there will be a uh, bright red uh, light effect and as soon as the boot up is finished and ready, 
this uh, effect will stop and we will have a 100% bright red solid uh, light. After that, what you need to do is add your Ethernet cable to the mix. So plug in uh, to the back of the device and plug it into your router or if you have a wall socket that is going to the router, just uh, use that. And when everything is done, it will take about 5 to 10 seconds and the light will switch to solid blue meaning that device is now connected to your network and you can go to your browser, open a browser tab and type in ihost.local to get started. As I mentioned, the first thing that we need to do is just open a browser tab and type in ihost.local. Now for the first time, uh, this is the screen that is supposed to uh, greet us. You need to set up a time zone depending on where you live the date is uh, there and you don't need to create a username all you need to do is uh, set up some kind of password that you will hopefully remember and uh, as soon as everything is done uh, you can click on the login button and hope for the best Now, after uh, the login, this will be your password, but don't worry, you can change this. First of all, you need to go to the settings uh, option on the left hand side, and uh, you will see that there are a few options already available. You can change the device name, uh, you can always use the little edit icon on the side and then make sure to save it. Uh, in language wise, there will be multilingual support in the future. Also, uh, you can uh, link your EVLink account. This is needed to make sure that uh, the device will show up in your EVLink account and also that you can uh, later on uh, get different things sorted out with it. So uh, right now the EVLink application is relatively uh, empty but the software update can be done through that so you will definitely need to connect it and uh, use that to do the first initial software update in my case it was 1.0 so i had to do a big jump in software update next we need to add a micro sd card to the back of the device so that we can get started with the add-ons um, after you have added the sd card to your device. There will be a new option available uh, as soon as you go to the Docker icon on the left and it will be asking for you to format uh, the SD card for the first time. So of course you can do that, click on the format button and wait for the uh, process to finish. Now you can already see that there is a pre-installed Sorry, a prepared uh, Docker add-on, which is for the EVLink smart home uh, devices. That is something that we will definitely need to install. And uh, that is there uh, on a permanent basis. So you cannot uh, simply uninstall it or remove that. Now, when, that, uh, when the formatting is finished, make sure to click on the install for the EVLink smart home uh, add-on as we will definitely need this to synchronize our devices from the EVLink account into the iHost uh, local system. So instead of, instead of having everything in the iHost, we actually synchronize the devices from our EVLink account uh, to the iHost's local management. So basically iHost is it's more like a middle management to uh, manage our devices so that we have control on the internet and we also have control with scenes and uh, other options uh, locally as well. And this will be quite useful uh, in, the in the future. After the installation is finished, just click on the run option and it will ask for a few different settings with the network, go with host and everything else can be left alone and just click on the run button. When that is finished, 
it will give us a new option. Basically the info and log is what you see with most of the different uh, add-ons. But the other thing is, is the web UI tab. This is where you need to use the login option uh, at the right hand side and it will synchronize, uh, sorry, it will list your devices to be able to synchronize them with the hub. Now the other thing is if you press the big plus icon on the top right, you can look for different uh, Docker images, for example, with the home bridge. If you go with the first option on the screen, that is uh, the recommended home bridge uh, Docker image for iHost. And when that is there, the process is the same. Just click on the install. And as soon as the process is finished, you will have the home bridge add on added. You just need to click on run and add the first details for the first time. And there you go add-ons are done and we can move forward to the next feature. Let's carry on with uh, checking out the different parts of our device just to make sure that we have a full understanding of what else it can do. As you can already uh, know with add-ons you can do many different interesting things. Uh, right now uh, I've just received a notice that the Node-RED uh, add-on is ready. So this is the one that you need to uh, look for. I will probably make a separate uh, few minutes tutorial on how to install that just in case if necessary. So um, what I did, I went into my EVLink account under the web UI tab. I have logged in and uh, synchronized some of the devices that are already compatible with iHost. Now, right now, these are the only devices that I can synchronize, but that is absolutely fine. Uh, this will uh, change in the future as with every single uh, bigger uh, devices like the NS Panel, NS Panel Pro uh, had the same issue that in the beginning they were relatively limited and with over time they, are, uh, they became more and more useful. So now that uh, you clicked on the devices that you wanted to sync, let's go back to the home screen. And as you can see, we have the different options on our home screen. Now here you can use the add room button to create different rooms or use the top right hand corner plus icon to add a Zigbee device, cameras or create groups. Now we will check this in a second. Uh, with the software update 1.4, uh, we received an update that the POW uh, Elite series became available with a proper graphic uh, or graph view. And instead of just clicking on the middle, uh, I will not do that because my computer is actually connected on that circuit. And I did that before this video and it wasn't fun. So just click on the three little dots for the different uh, settings. And as you can see, uh, we have the option as in the uh, EVLink application. But on the right hand corner, we have the settings option and you can see the different uh, information, uh, what is available right now. We can go back and there is this little graph icon or graphics icon. And with every single time, it will download the remaining time frame from uh, where it was uh, updated the last time. So it can depend on, on sorry, it can vary from uh, time to time, depending on how much data it needs to download. Now, right now, it is relatively slow, as you might have seen it. But then again, we have a nice uh, graph uh, graphic view, and we can even download the data uh, if needed. So this is one option. We can check out uh, this Zigbee device. This Zigbee uh, SNZB01 uh, button was added to uh, the iHost. So this one is available there. And I have synchronized two of the S26 Wi-Fi smart plugs. And they are also available uh, with the usual information and the button to press them. Let's move on. So if you want to add a Zigbee device, now at this very moment, you need to keep in mind that if you use this uh, Zigbee uh, device pairing, these devices right now will not show up in your EV-Link account. 
So they are something called a local device. So you can create the scenes and everything locally, but they will not show up as sub devices on your uh, Evening application when you're checking out the things on your mobile phone. I have mentioned this already to the team at uh, Sonoff. We'll see how it progresses further. I'm not too sure what is the logic behind this because I cannot see the logic behind this, but that's a thing. So if you want to pair your uh, Zigbee dedicated devices with uh, the son of iHost, just click on the pair and the scanning will be started and you will see a list of devices at the bottom. Then you can change the names and whatever you wish to do. Now, if we go back to all devices, once again, press the plus button and the next option is to add a camera. Now we have three options. One is to look for a on with uh, compatible or feature available uh, camera on our network. The other option is to add a RTSP uh, camera feed to uh, our dashboard. Also, we have in case you have an ESP32 camera uh, in your uh, network, then once again, this is an option to add that uh, to your security options. And of course, the last option is to create a group. You can add a group name. You can choose a room optionally. And of course, you can choose the different devices that you may want to assign to that uh, group. The next option will be the uh, smart scenes. So here I have already created a scene, but then again, at the bottom, you have the add scene option, usual if then uh, factors. Let's go to a smart scene that I have already created. If we click on the edit option, you can see that if I uh, click on that button, it will turn on the two lights that I use in my studio. And we have an effective uh, period option. So you can actually do the time frames properly with all the little uh, fine tuning for what it should uh, do. Now the next option on our list is the uh, security uh, center. This is the same type that we have in the uh, Zigbee Bridge Pro Hub, in case if you're using one of them, and also with the uh, NS Panel Pro. Mm, just because of that, I'm not sure if I'm going to go into details too much, but then again, um, you can set up your different modes depending on what you want to do. Uh, alarm volume, what should it uh, do? Maybe it should be a custom time period or just uh, the alarm should just keep on going. What kind of sub devices you can do to trigger an, uh, an alarm and so on. So these are the usual uh, options for your security system. Now, uh, something that we have also uh, built into the iHost is the EVLink uh, cast option. In my opinion, this is extremely useful uh, for, especially for beginner users, because if we just configure a smart scene, oh, by the way, uh, top right corner, you can switch the view options depending on what kind of screen you might be using. I have a very old Samsung Galaxy uh, tablet that I managed to uh, flash with a newer Android operating system, and now it can be used for Home Assistant or to see anything uh, in the actual browser as well, because the old browsers weren't working properly. So for the cast name, you can just uh, do whatever you like to name it. You can assign different uh, devices to it, and you can even uh, check uh, for different scenes. Now, in this case, I am not 100% sure why we don't have a scene here because it was already uh, added to uh, the settings. So this is probably something uh, that I'm missing or maybe a software update is needed. Of course, with the settings, you can add the security options as well. And optionally, you can add a um, pin code of your choice and Let's switch to pad. Yeah, well, this is not much, but it is perfect for testing. Now click on the save button. And as soon as that is there, we have that. Now to test it out, of course, all you have to do is just type in, in a new browser tab, ihost.local slash 
podcast. And just in case, if your network does not like these kind of uh, names, then you can use your uh, iHost's IP address slash cast, and it should work as well. Now I just uh, clicked on the link provided, and this is what we can see. You can choose uh, the language, and uh, this is what we have. So if you have a tablet for controlling your home screen, then this is available. I think this will be very useful for uh, newer users, but even if you add all the different options later on, then even for, um, let's say, the non-technical oriented users, for example, your partner, your kids, um, this will be uh, great for that. With Docker, uh, we already uh, explored this one. So basically, this is all that this device can do right now. Now, keep in mind that there is a memory and CPU uh, matter on the bottom. This is the old one. I guess this will be removed in a software update very soon because after 1.4, we received the top uh, sensory information so we have the cpu the memory and the cpu temperature um, in in the top left corner that is something brand new with the software update 1.4 and uh, for some reason the bottom part uh, remained there so i cannot really say too much about that why that was left in there but that is a different story uh, story before the conclusion, I wanted to make sure that we have a quick look on the um, feature roadmap. So basically, uh, we just received, I mean, just at the release date, we have the Node-RED uh, add-on available. So there might be uh, interesting feature updates in the very near future. Uh, what we have is that there should be a Zigbee compatibility add-on. This is definitely something I'm interested in because I have tested uh, some devices and for some reason they did not want to connect if it's not a Sonoff Zigbee device. So that will be up for testing. We will get a Zigbee network uh, topology map which might be quite interesting. And also there is a TTS ability. Um, having the microphone and speaker, this will be quite an interesting uh, development, especially if we get some kind of um, smart speaker kind of functionality so that we can use our voice to get details of the device and different uh, information from sensors and uh, relays of their status. Now for the quarter two, uh, there should be an NS Panel Pro add-on, which will be quite interesting. I'm curious about that. Weather forecast add-on is something that I'm not really interested, but uh, I guess that will be for the evening cast so that when you have a dashboard on a tablet or somewhere in the home, then that will be definitely useful. Now, something that is 100% interesting is the Tasmota add-on. I definitely wish that they would not leave that for too long and they should start that uh, in the very near future because then if you have flashed your different devices with, uh, with Tasmota then that could be added to the device and there are no needs for any kind of uh, different ways around it. Uh, after that, uh, for quarter three, uh, there should be some cast feature upgrades. I'm curious what they have in mind. Uh, support for EVLink remote, so that the Bluetooth chip inside the device should be uh, available uh, to be used at least with that uh, options and of course the support for multi-languages now that is something that i would definitely put uh, to the beginning as well at least for the most used languages i mean uh, i speak uh, english and hungarian so hungarian is definitely a language that is not uh, on the top of the list but at least uh, two or three of the main languages other than english um, and Chinese, so maybe Spanish, for example, would be definitely uh, needed in terms of amount of users. And in quarter three, uh, there is a matter compatibility or matter uh, update that will be uh, once again an interesting one to see what kind of uh, features we're gonna get this year. But then again, since this device is using uh, the same Zigbee chip as most of the brand new uh, Zigbee capable devices from Sonoff, then obviously the compatibility and matter compatibility will be added 
probably to all the devices. And after that, AJI machine, uh, machine vision and music rhythm. I mean, music rhythm, I have no clue how that came in, but uh, machine vision is something that I guess it was going back to the USB 2 port with the AI recognition about uh, what is happening and uh, whatsoever. And AJI, we will see what they actually have in mind, because once again, we have all the hardware uh, built in so that uh, if we can create a smarter uh, home with this little home server, then that is something that most users will definitely enjoy. So as a conclusion about uh, what we have seen and uh, what's on the roadmap, what I would say that I will definitely buy uh, at least two pieces of the uh, RV1126. And for the reason that I know that you can install all sorts of different interesting things with add-on, the hardware is there. So even in the future, if there will be some kind of other software solutions for this device, definitely worth the price. At least in hardware wise, it is, I think the price is absolutely amazing. Now, put that aside, if it definitely worth it for you. Now, keep in mind that this is not a device that you can use as a central hub currently uh, for all your different devices. I have already asked uh, about the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability, and currently these cannot be used to add uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capable devices to your actual iHost uh, hub. All the only Zigbee devices can be added. So this is something that you definitely need to know because I know on the marketing, on paper, it says Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee. But in reality, currently you can only use the Zigbee add option. And even those devices are not showing up in your EVLink application or EVLink account. Now, this, this is quite interesting because those information can be synced to our EVLink account, so we should be able to see them, but currently they are not. I'm not saying that they will not change this in the future, because once again, this is just a software uh, update away from being able to be used. But as a conclusion, I think that this is an amazing start. The hardware seems amazing. I took this uh, box absolutely apart. So you can see that on my uh, blog on randomsmartthings.com. Uh, I took it completely apart. Uh, you have the detailed information about everything. And I will definitely, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward on what is IT Sonoff is going to do with this device software wise. The roadmap is great, but uh, I think with enough feedback from you, the actual users, they might change the logic or attitude uh, about some of the features that they want to, uh, that they turned off or they are not using currently. So maybe we will see a lot more sense after a few months. Uh, keep in mind that when this video is being released is the release date of the uh, Sonoff iHost uh, Smart Home Hub as well. And as far as I know, I just need to check that there will be some offers. So basically the first 200, uh, yeah, the first 200 purchases uh, will be on an absolute limited sale. So there will be about 40% off. Basically the uh, 80 and $100 units, so the, uh, the, the dual core to the, compared to the quad core version, uh, there will be uh, 50 and $60. That's why I said that I'm definitely going to buy two of the bigger units. And then after that, there will be um, more units, but still a limited amount of sale uh, as an early bird sale, but that will be like 10% uh, more expensive. So still plenty of time to make a decision. Don't rush, think about it. If you take a look on Raspberry Pi prices and how many uh, different USB devices you need to plug in to use the same things on that, I'm not applying anything, but I'm definitely going to purchase because of that, just for fun. I mean, in the end of the day, the worst thing that you can do is just uh, 
um, install a different software. <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely worth it. But um, I wish to keep on using it as it is and uh, see the review unit, uh, how the features are going to progress and keep you updated with, uh, with well, over time, make newer and newer feature uh, update videos. If there is something that we need to uh, show to you, if there is something that I think that is definitely worth your time. Hopefully this video was helpful enough. If yes, please make sure to hit the uh, like button and subscribe uh, to show me that you are interested more in more smart home or any kind of technical videos in the future. So until the next video, have an awesome day and see you next time.